In this box is an Alienware laptop so massive, it comes with its own gravitational field. And in today's video, we're gonna tear it open to have a look at its insides, yeah, oh! And then, we're gonna game on it. That is very interesting packing material. It's just like savaged sheets of cardboard. That's pretty cool, I've never seen that before. Ooh, and then there is some laptop already. Look at that. Under that, hidden in some more haystack, we have the power brick, which, oh, it's a big boy. This titan of a power brick pumps out 16.9 amps. Clearly, the mothership is hungry for power. Oh. This behemoth is the Alienware M18X. In combination with its mild depth, an 18.4 inch display dwarfed on all sides by bezel. It makes a 15.6 inch laptop look like a toy for babies and a lot more practical. I mean, surely a PC built into the side of a mountain would be more portable than this thing. It is obscenely massive for a laptop. Oh wait, actually I think the official term is desktop replacement. Now obviously, the most important question we need to answer about this laptop is can you open it with one hand? I'd be really surprised if you couldn't, because it doesn't really have an excuse for you not to be able to, but let's have a look. Yeah, you just about can. Wow, putting your hands over this keyboard makes you feel like you're a child, but... An interesting keyboard. It's got a surprising amount of travel, but I guess it makes sense considering that the laptop is three miles thick. Now, of course, with a laptop of this immense size, it does come with a numpad so you can role play as a data enterer. The huge size of the laptop makes the trackpad seem comically tiny. And by modern standards, it is very small, even by much smaller laptop standards. Hinting at its gamer pedigree, we've got some macro keys on the side of the keyboard. I love how the 18.4 inch display manages to look tiny on this laptop amongst all the bezel. Wow, there is a strong smell of car interior cleaning chemical in here. Now as you've hopefully been able to tell up until this point with a combination of the weird farmhouse packaging combined with what seems to be several pounds of person cheese on the keyboard deck, the 17 feet across bezels and the dents in the top metal plate, this is not a new laptop. I bought it refurbished off of eBay and it not being new means it has fascinating specs. Starting off with IO, which has dated it quite a bit. Uh, we do have an HDMI port, but next to that is a Firewire port with two USB ports and a just full plethora of audio jacks. That's pretty cool. On this side, we get two more USB ports, an ethernet port, a DVD drive, which again dates it quite a bit, and an SD card slot. On a side note, back in 2013, this base model cost almost 3,000 US dollars new, which adjusted for inflation is almost $4,000 in today's money for the base model. And that eye-watering price doesn't even include the cost of the mule you have to rent to move this thing around for you. Around the back, there's a whole bunch of heatsink peeking out, which makes sense considering that this has two graphics cards in it which I think means we should open it up and have a look. On the bottom, there's this small plaque with some alien on it. That's quite a nice touch. Wait a minute, is that a glory hole on a Dell product? That's all. There's like three screws that you undo, and then you can very easily remove this bottom plate, and then you get access to the SSD, which you can upgrade, the RAM, where we actually get dual channel RAM in this configuration, very excited, uh, but you also get access to the battery. You can just lift it out like that. Look at that! That's so exciting! 
And then over here, you can even remove your DVD drive and replace that with something else once it's broken. And then if you want to go deeper, it's pretty easy to do as well. You don't even need to undo any screws. You just kind of pop it out with a thing. And then you have access to all of your fans, all three of them, which are quite easy to replace as well. It's just three screws holding them in. And then under here, we also have access to an SSD slot, which I don't think that's M.2. The spacing in the connector looks wrong. At this point, as you can tell from my wildly flailing hands, I went on a long unhinged rant about why is it with modern laptops that you need to undo 7 million screws and break the fabric of the universe to get access to the inside, which is just filled with a bunch of soldered down crap. What happened to the upgrade glue? Glory hole, and how have we gone this far backwards in 10 years? But I'm sure you're not interested in that, so we'll move swiftly on. Before I tear this down deeper, I do want to test it, because we're going to have to do some pretty major surgery to get the motherboard out and stuff. And considering that this is a refurbished eBay model, I do want to test it and see if it's working before I potentially break it. So I'm going to reassemble it now test it, and then I'll do the deeper teardown later on. Which through the power of time travel, you get to see right now. Ooh, we've got some MXM peeking through under there, which has gotten me inappropriately excited. And after removing the rest of the fans and the Blu-ray drive, I started undoing all the screws I could find, and then flipped the laptop around to try and penetrate through the other side. There which we went well. Oh, nothing. There we go. Yeah. Oh! Uh, so this is the, the keyboard base. This is our trackpad, both of which is replaceable. And they connect to this bit of PCB, which is like a fan hub, but for keyboard and trackpad, basically. This is our SD card reader. So I think this is our power button. And on this side, it's like the LEDs telling you if it's powered up or not. So that's what all of that does. And then down here is the insides of it, which are pretty spectacular, quite frankly. For the SLI'd GTX 765s that we have in here, uh, they each have their own cooling solution. Uh, and they are actually on MXM boards. So these are upgradable if you want to do that, which very very cool and i think the cpu may also be socketed now i want to start off by removing one of the gpus uh, so i'm going to start off with this one for no particular reason interestingly i think this ribbon cable is the sli cable that connects the two gpus that's very cool to see in a laptop it's like an sli bridge but for laptop gpus <laughs> And with just oh. some medium struggle, it popped free. Oh. And that is the back of our GTX 765M module. This is some of the two gigs of video memory, and above that is the MXM connector. This teeny bit of heat spreader looks like it's contacting the back of video memory, or maybe the power delivery. And then this little chunk is our cooling for it. On this side, you can see that it makes more contact with like power delivery and stuff. So let's remove the heatsink and have a closer look at the actual PCB. Oh yeah, that just clipped out of the way. And then there's a little graphics card. Ooh, that thermal paste is Sahara dry. This is a pretty cool solution to GPU upgradability in a laptop. It's a shame it was abandoned in a McDonald's playpen at such an early age. The power delivery and the tiny SLI connector are just so cute. It's crazy that this is just one of two Kepler GPUs in this laptop. Compared to the GPU removal, the CPU heatsink required just a hair more shouting. Ugh. Whoa, look at that heatsink. Not only is it physically huge for a laptop CPU heatsink, but it's also, it's copper. Look at that. Wow. This is like my retirement right here, this bit of heatsink. And that's used to cool our i7 4700 HQ, I think. And it is socketed, which again is amazing for a laptop. Let me remove that and have a closer look. So you can see on the back, it's PGA because the pins are on the CPU as opposed to the socket. Thermal paste is very dry. Going by what the thermal paste application looks like on this side, I think this is the factory application from like nine years ago. 
Uh, so no wonder it's a bit dry. So now that we've seen how lusciously modular the inside of this old Alienware laptop is, let's see if it works and then try game on it. I am very curious to see how this thing's gonna run, considering that we have SLI'd graphics cards in here. The power button's weirdly hot. Yes, it works, very good. I really don't know what kind of driver compatibility we're gonna have for the two graphics cards. So let's see. Ooh, the last driver is from 2019. Luckily, the geriatric driver installed with little effort, and it seemed like turning on SLI was pretty straightforward. So disable SLI is on by default. So I guess maximize 3D performance, SLI enable. Oh, okay, so it's as easy as just pressing a button. But let's see if that actually translates into more performance. I am very excited about the whole SLI in a laptop thing. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, currently, we have it turned off. So we've just got the top GPU running. And this is with GTA running at 1080p normal settings. And with that, this is actually a surprisingly similar result as we got from the APU in the previous video. So that's quite interesting. I mean, they, they pretty much exactly line up in terms of performance. It does not have that standard laptop symptom of SpaceX rocket at takeoff. Yeah, it's surprisingly quiet, actually. But it makes sense. It is a physically huge laptop with not a whole lot of power draw happening. But yeah, with GTA 5, let's turn on the second GPU and see what it does. Whoa. That's pretty much doubled the frame rate. Okay, well, now that I've set off, it is a reasonable amount less than double now. Uh, that's not the best performance scaling going from one to two GPUs, if, if I'm honest. In fact, according to the standardized benchmark, we just got a 56% increase in performance, which only got worse with the other games. But it wasn't all bad. As far as I can tell, we don't have noticeable like micro stutter issues and stuff like that. Uh, which is something that is apparently also very common with multi-GPU setups. Now granted, we do just have a 60Hz monitor, so maybe I can't see any of the issues. Now with CSGO at 1080p competitive settings, uh, th the frame rate is kind of all over the place. At the moment, it's very high, uh, but at certain points it does dip down quite a lot. Uh, but here, it, it feels good. Although the display isn't very good. Gaming laptop displays have come a long way in the last nine years since this laptop came out. Okay, um, so with CSGO, it, it's, it's not making a very big difference, is it? It really wasn't. Turning on the second GPU only added about 39% more performance. The single GPU, Battlefield 5 at low settings, 1080p, is not having a great time. We're actually getting a worse performance than the iGPU in the AMD system from the previous video. Uh, but maybe adding a second GPU will help. So now that we have full power activated, it has led to... Um... Ex ex exactly the same gaming performance. In fact, when I did the standardized benchmark, if anything, with SLI enabled, it actually performs worse because of the 1 and 0.1% lows. That's not very good. So at the end of the day, this old Leviathan may have a magnificent hardware configuration. Ten years after its launch, depending on the game, it struggles to keep up with a $100 iGPU. Isn't progress amazing? Aside from all of the soldering down antics. Do you know what else is amazing? Subscribing to this channel, an act that's guaranteed to increase your system's RGB luminosity by at least 39%. Give it a try, and until the next video, bye bye.